What's up everyone? My name is Gary and today I'm in Thebes, Illinois. This once was a vibrant town. Now you can see it's just a lot of open land. So let's get out here and explore and find out why Thebes is a great Mississippi River town. So you may be asking, where is Thebes, Illinois? So it's located along the banks of the Mississippi River in extreme southern Illinois just southeast of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. As you can see, there is a valley between Cape and Scott City. This valley was once where the mighty Mississippi flowed, but at some time in the past, glacier meltwater flooded the Mississippi Valley and diverted the river into a weakened path that leads through what is now known as Thieves Gap. This diversion led to a narrow channel with high banks that was right for human settlement. In the early 1800s, two brothers by the name of Sparhawk traveled from New Orleans up the river looking for a place to settle. They also wanted to log timber for keelboats so they could send the wood down south. They landed on the wooded slopes of this rocky channel and soon established a small community. They called this settlement Sparhawk's Landing. That small community would continue to grow and would eventually be renamed Thebes. In 1846, it became the county seat of Alexander County. In 1848, a new courthouse was completed and the town was set for further growth. Buildings such as churches, taverns, general shops, and a hotel would soon follow. In 1899, the first railroad came to town, which was called the Chicago and Eastern. Two more would follow. In 1904, the Cotton Belt would pass through. The most impressive and longest lasting would be the Missouri Pacific, which in 1902 would begin the construction of an engineering marvel that would span across the Mississippi River. To begin the project, 12 concrete arches were constructed and large wooden molds were set into place to handle almost a million cubic feet of concrete that was needed for an approach to the main steel structure. Six piers were needed to support the spans. At the heart of each pier would be limestone, with granite on each end. A rough textured limestone would then be used as facing, which was quarried in Bedford, Indiana. As the piers and approach were nearing completion, the steel superstructure would soon take form. The bridge would consist of five spans. At its center would be a 671 feet cantilever truss span that would allow river traffic to continue as it was being built. Tragedy would soon strike during July 1904. A freak tornado caused a crane to topple 150 feet, landing on the rocks below. Seven men would lose their lives, and two more were injured. Tragically, 25 workers would perish during the construction of the bridge. The project would push forward. By the spring of 1905, the two frames were inching closer together. In April of that year, this massive feat of engineering was complete. The town of Thebes would be forever altered as the sounds of the railroad pushed forth over the mighty Mississippi. 120 years later, you can observe this creation. To get the best view, it is important to time your visit during low water levels. So this is one of the pillars that holds up this bridge here. There's holes in the center here. I don't know if that's how they uh, clasp the rock to put it in position because they are pretty well centered. And that just continues to go up. Uh, since I've been here so far and I've not been here very long, uh, we've had two trains go over. So. As you work your way past the bridge, you can observe the interesting geology of the area. This limestone that I've been following so far, this is called Kimswick limestone and it looks different than say what we saw at uh, Inspiration Point, uh, what we saw at Devil's Backbone and Grand Tower. Now this rock here, it seems to be polished off and it looks like like skin almost, like uh, elephant skin, how wrinkly it is. And it, it's smooth and it feels absolutely different than just this regular limestone over here it is quite beautiful and it sparkles looks like in some areas very neat very cool find there's lots of little shells here on the shoreline really beautiful shells too 
Yeah, shells are just not for seas. Oh, look at that. So, with this Mississippi sand here, it has a lot of water in it, so you can sink down pretty far. Now, I've seen footprints of people who've got over into the wrong sections, and uh, yeah, that could leave you stuck. Oh, look at this. Isn't that neat? That's something you'd find on the ocean, or in the ocean. Yeah, just a super small shell, little spiral shell. That's a cool little find. Looks like we've got some coal here. We've got like maybe a tow line, big piece of cable goes out through there. But there's a school of fish going right through there. Um, right there is one. I've encountered several dead fish along my walk here, and I believe they are Asian carp. Uh, and these are a, a intrusive species upon the Mississippi. Still making my way across the uh, limestone. Doesn't look like I've got a very far to go, but uh, I'm gonna walk it till it's in. Yeah, I wanna see if there's anything else that's pretty cool. Uh, this end here. It's a little bit flatter. So I have to watch my step here because this is a lot muddier than what it was previously. So yeah, you can see right here, we've got, we've got water coming in from the Mississippi. So I'm gonna try to get out here, take it easy. Looks like there's enough exposed rock where I can get over there. And anything that is not dry like that, that, that's really slippery. So I have to be careful on that. I am at the end of the line. There's a little rock here that I've thrown some rocks up against to try to get over, but I'm not going to chance it. And what we're seeing now is the shoreline is starting to muddy up quite a bit. said to be on look for potholes and stuff like that. But I found something that's interesting. It goes under. Oh. This part here has been out of the water a lot longer. You can see how the ground has been severely cracked. These nodules here. And that is reminiscent of Inspiration Point, but it's a different color. Uh, it's a different size. So there's some throughout here. And there's that polished rock again. Very smooth. This is the last thing I wanted to check out on this side. And it's these pilings. And they're all strewn throughout here. And it's directly underneath the, the railroad here. I would assume that uh, this was built up on something where they could get stuff out here. Cause I mean, it's directly in line with that pillar. So this is gonna end this side of the uh, river for me. I think I'm going to go back up this way and check out another rock outcrop. Didn't look as extensive as this, but it had some uh, taller mushroom shapes. All right, we've got a structure here. Looks like it was two bricks wide. And it was roundish. And apparently it has something to do with the... Uh, a lot of pipes because we've got lots of old pipes down here. If you know what this structure was, just leave a comment below. Okay, what I thought was a different type of rock from far off is actually a structure. And this is where it's collapsed here. You can see the roundness. This looks like a silo. And then we've got this big hole over here. 
this is what it was attached to at one time. Now, what exactly this was, I have no idea, but maybe I could do some research and find out what this building was that fell over this way. So if you know what this is, you know, put a comment below. So now I'm on that uh, big piece of metal and it says Pebble Beach. Coming to the end here where the rock meets the water. While filming this video, the river was in severe drought conditions. To keep the channel open, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers called on Dredge Jadwin, which was first commissioned in 1933. Jadwin is a dustpan dredge that is capable of dislodging and suctioning the river bottom, which then disposes of sediment via floating discharge pipe out of the channel traffic. It is truly an amazing process to observe. Sitting high atop the bluff overlooking the Mississippi is the 170-year-old historic landmark of Thebes Courthouse. Right now it's closed. Uh, it looks like Sundays from noon to three is when it's normally maybe open. Times vary and seasonal closures do happen, so check their Facebook page to find out when they are open. I'll put a link in the description below. Completed in 1848, this landmark stood watch over the Mississippi for 57 years before the Thebes Railroad was finished. The courthouse is a two-story structure that was built with native sandstone. The architecture was heavily influenced by the Southern Greek Revival that tended to be more box-like with striking columns and an expansive front porch. Eventually, I timed my next visit to explore the inside of the courthouse. Several prominent historical figures such as Dred Scott, Abraham Lincoln, and John A. Logan are said to have passed through this courthouse. Originally, the top floor may have been a single room, but in a 1934 survey, it was indicated that four rooms had been added. Today, you can view an extensive collection of old books and local historical items on this floor. There is even a mastodon bone that was found nearby. The highlight of the tour for me was stepping out onto the front porch and taking in the impressive overview of historic Thebes. Downstairs is where prisoners were detained. Made up of two anti-rooms, a hallway, and two cells, this space is dramatically different than upstairs. Entering the men's cell, you feel as though you have stepped into some ancient medieval dungeon. A faint slit of light enters a narrow window, making the room feel confined. According to the 1934 survey, what is now a wooden floor used to be an earthen floor. As you cross the hallway and come to the next anteroom, you soon enter the women's cell. Unlike the men's cell, it has a larger window with a view outside, giving it a less dungeon-like feel. The last area I wanted to explore was a log cabin next to the courthouse. This is a recent addition to the, the property here. Um, I'll try to get some history on this, but these tags here, Wherever it was brought from, these tags would seem to indicate how it was supposed to be put back together. So northeast side, eight, nine. So that's cool. Someone took a lot of time to uh, take this apart and then make sure they get it back together properly because that's just as important, of course. Get some nice vegetation in there. As you make your way around the building, one can appreciate the craftsmanship of the cabin. Dovetail notches were used to interconnect the rough hewn log. But very cool. It's nice to see them preserving history. The inside is decorated with period furniture. It gives one a sense of how life might have been during that time. My time at Thebes had come to an end. It had been a joy to film here. I had been fascinated by its geology, overwhelmed by its history, and reminded that there are many more Mississippi River stories just waiting to be uncovered. 
I was grateful and thankful that I got to know just a little bit about this small river town in Illinois called Thebes. Whew, it is cold out here today. Uh, it's been about a month and a half since I filmed this video and I want to come back and give you some updates before I released it. So first of all, I wanted to thank the Thieves Historical Society for all they do. They preserve photos, they preserve the courthouse, and they do a lot to keep this history going. Because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have these photos to put together. There would be something lost. Secondly, I found out that I really enjoyed the process of bringing those photos to life. Uh, to look at that photo and figure out how it sounds. That was a fascinating experience. This is my tribute to Ken Burns. Thirdly, I learned that history is a messy business, uh, meaning that some of the things that I brought to you in this video are hard to determine if they're the correct information or not. Uh, one that stands out was the name of the landing. In the video, I called it Sparhawks Landing, but I also saw that uh, it may have been called Sparrowhawks Landing. So, I didn't know which one to go with, but I went with the most prevalent one and the one that seemed right, and um, I just had to run with it. Now the next one is the name of this actual railroad. I think I called it the Missouri Pacific in the video, but uh, it was a conglomeration of uh, railroads that put this together. So I had to determine if I wanted to add all that information and then kind of sift through it. And ultimately, I didn't. I only had less than three minutes to tell the story in the photos of this bridge and Thebes. In the comments, we can talk a little bit more about this. Uh, I am absolutely open to constructive criticism, but not destructive criticism. So just be nice down there. Just be kind. Okay, I've got a barge coming, but I'm going to keep on filming. And if you've made it this far in the video, thank you. It really means a lot. I'm just a one-person crew here with a camera, my cell phone, and editing software. And I'm just doing it as, as a love for Southern Illinois, the Mississippi River, and history. So if you haven't subscribed, what the heck are you waiting for? I hope I've earned your subscription. Um, you know, if I have, give me a like, hit subscribe, because those things really help and they tell me that you're enjoying this content and it's going to steer the channel in that direction so thank you again thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one